Worksheet 1 is a worksheet that you should do each week. It will develop your skills in identifying your feelings in terms of words and your negative thoughts related to an experience. It helps you to analyze these negative thoughts for distortions and helps you to come up with a more positive way of stating a thought. I like to have the feelings words and the cognitive distortions handouts ready as I complete this worksheet. It will help me to describe my thoughts in a structured way. As you can see, there's five steps to this process. Step number one, what is the negative thought or event? This can be anything that happened to you at any time which left you feeling bad. During your reading, you identified a time when your friend criticized your housekeeping. For this video, we'll choose another example. Let's say your negative event was a fight that you had with your best friend. You were discussing how to correctly put in a roll of toilet paper. She said it was supposed to be top down and you said it should be top up. It seems trivial, but you're still angry about this. You will say, I had a fight with my friend over the toilet paper. It was during an evening at her house and we had had a couple of um, glasses of wine over dinner. So let's, let's type that in. Let's put in the fight. Okay, so there you are, a fight. Fight with your friend uh, over the toilet paper. Evening at her house, we did have a couple of glasses of wine over dinner. Okay, next, identify the feeling words. So you'll look at the feeling chart over here, and you'll try to come up with the words that sort of summarized how you felt at that time. So when I think about the, wor the, the feeling words that I had, a few words come into to, um, play. The words are irritated, annoyed, aggravated, criticized, and insulted. Boy, I was feeling really bad that night. Okay, step three. Let's identify the negative thoughts associated with this event. So my first thought was, my friend always thinks that they're right. My second thought was, everyone should know that the toilet paper goes in with the top down. Okay, and the third thought that I had was that I should know because no one changes a toilet paper in my house but me. And the last one was that I thought was, and you know what, my friend has so much money that she probably has a maid that does it for her. So those are the negative thoughts that I had after that event. I felt really bad. Okay, next I have to identify the distorted thoughts. So again, I'm gonna to turn to the handout and I'm gonna look at the negative thought that I had. I'm gonna say, well, what category does that fall under? So let's go back and let's look at these negative thoughts. Well, my friend always thinks she's right. Well, when I look at that calendar, I would think that or when that the distorted thought thing, I would think that that probably is an example of black and white thinking and overgeneralization. For the next thought, when I say everybody knows that the toilet paper always goes with the top down, well, I think I would have to say that that is a black and white um, thought. You know, everyone, you know, there's not, there's nothing you can say that pertains to everyone. Obviously, this is different. <laughs> Obviously, my friend feels one way and I do the other. Okay, the third one, I should know because no one changes the toilet paper around my house. Well, you know, that's kind of unrelated to my friend. That's more, where, where's my reward? Somebody should give me credit for having to change the toilet paper. And it's really unfair anyway that I have to do it all the time. And the last negative comment that I had was, uh, my friend has so much money, she probably has a maid that does it for her. Well, the results, the, the cognitive distortion behind what that was, that's not very fair that she has all that money. Okay, but again, you can see that each of these negative thoughts really kind of have not a whole lot to do with the problem, but it has more to do with some of the feelings that I have in my head right now. So let's go back to those negative thoughts and let's try to, try to reword them into something more positive. So for the first negative thought where my friend always thinks they're right, I may come up with a, a new statement that says, just because we're disagreeing about this, it doesn't mean she always thinks she's right. Well, just last week we disagreed and she admitted she was wrong. And then recently during an, a discussion, I realized I was wrong. 
So that's my new thought that, that sort of is against my negative thought. For the next one, everyone knows the toilet paper goes um, goes with the top up. I would I would now say that uh, does it really matter what way it goes on? Maybe it depends on what you prefer. <laughs> is it really all that important? And that's what I'm starting to figure out. For the third negative thought that I should know because no one in my family ever does it. Well, now my new thought is because I know that that's not really related to my friends. I'm going to remind my family that everyone's responsible for changing the toilet paper roll. Maybe that will help spread out the work. So I'm sort of taking it into my own hands now, and that's a little bit better than, than having an argument with my friend over something that really has nothing to do with her. And the last one, my friend has so much money that she probably has a maid to do it for her. Well, my new thought is it shouldn't matter that my friend has more money than I do. It's never an issue when we're together. So although this is a silly example, you can see that the process is good. You can take any negative event or even a foul mood that you're experiencing at the time and you can use this process to figure out where the bad feelings are coming from. This takes lots of practice. Each week you should try a couple of worksheets. As the session goes on, you'll learn other techniques that will support this technique and uh, they, they may even, these new techniques may even work better if the problem or event calls for a different approach. Don't forget to complete worksheet number two and worksheet three. So worksheet two is, is giving you the distorted thought um, name such as black and white thinking. It describes it. Things are always one way or the other. But now you're being asked to give an example of that. And just now we gave an example of that when, when we said that everyone knows that the toilet paper goes up and down. So go through each of these and try to come up with an example that's going to help you to understand better what these distorted thoughts are. The third worksheet is cognitive distortion. So I try to come up with some negative thoughts and um, you don't have to come up with a positive one, but do sort of look at the negative thought and try to come up with the distorted thought that goes with it. So try to, try to identify what that distorted thought is. So I hate my job is a negative thought. And then you would go to your distorted ones and you would think, well, that's, you know, that's black and white and that's you know, negative. And just go through the distorted ones and try to find out the answer. All right, that's all for now. Keep working on your readings and your worksheets. And you can email me anytime with questions. Thanks a lot. Bye.